Hello, my name is Fausto Labruta. I'm a radiologist and chief of ultrasound at Karolinska University Hospital in Stockholm, Sweden. Today's presentation will be about ultrasound-guided drainage of the gallbladder or cholecystostomy. This is a procedure that aims at decompressing gallbladder by insertion of a percutaneous drainage tube. We will uh, briefly discuss indications for this procedure and uh, patient preparation. We will uh, follow a step-by-step -step guide to performing this procedure and we will take a quick look at uh, common complications. Enjoy! Ultrasound guided percutaneous drainage of the gallbladder or cholecystostomy is a minimal invasive procedure used to decompress the gallbladder. Patients who undergo drainage of the gallbladder fall basically into two categories. Those in which the procedure represents a bridge to surgery and those in which it is intended as a definitive treatment. The patient in which gallbladder drainage represents a bridge to surgery is typically a patient who suffers of a gallbladder obstruction and is not a candidate to immediate surgical treatment because of contraindications. The contraindications can depend on the patient's general status, for example, coagulation problems, or local conditions such as pericholecystic infections. These patients may undergo percutaneous cholecystostomy to decompress the obstructed gallbladder as a first temporizing measure, and after the symptoms have subsided and the status is optimized, Usually, the definitive treatment will be cholecystectomy. On the other hand, in acalculous cholecystitis, or in patients whose age or life expectancy does not allow surgical treatment, percutaneous cholecystostomy may be intended as a definitive treatment. Whether the cholecystostomy is intended as a temporary or definitive measure, in order to make it safe and worthwhile, it is mandatory for the radiologist to obtain relevant patient history. For example, we must know if patient has undergone previous uh, upper GI surgery or uh, biliary surgery. And we must uh, exclude uh, contraindications. Most of the contraindications are connected to patient coagulatory status. Thus, we must uh, obtain a preoperative workup. Uh, at our institution, we only admit patients to this procedure if uh, their blood count features a platelet count of more than 50,000 and if their activated prothrombin time is of less than 40 seconds and their international normalized ratio is of less than 1.6. Also, we recommend preoperative antibiotic prophylaxis. In order to fully grasp the details of this procedure, we need to be familiar with the two most common approaches to gallbladder puncture. Let us imagine that this is the abdominal wall depicted in a section, this is the liver, and this green one is the gallbladder. The transperitoneal approach to cholecystostomy entails that a drainage tube is inserted through the abdominal wall and through the peritoneum to reach the gallbladder and drain it. At this point, a hole is made on the free wall of the gallbladder, and through this hole, despite the presence of the drainage tube, a small bile leakage can be anticipated, especially when the gallbladder is decompressed and becomes more mobile. Bile leakage is a feared and potentially very dangerous complication of cholecystostomy because of two factors. On one hand, the chemical properties of the bile, which is extremely irritating and causes a very painful chemical inflammation of the peritoneum, and on the other hand, the richness in bacteria of the bile, which poses the risk of infection spreading to the peritoneal cavity. Since in this position the gallbladder is still very mobile, the development of a mature tractus is very slow. Thus, upon removal of the drainage tube, the risk for an even larger bile leakage is big. The transhepatic approach to cholecystostomy is thought to minimize the risks of chemical and bacterial peritonitis. According to this technique, the drainage is inserted through the abdominal wall and through the liver parenchyma 
to reach the gold ladder. At this point, the tube is locked in position and gentle traction is applied. As you can see from this cartoon, this motion pulls the gallbladder to adhere to the liver surface, thus limiting the risk of bile leakage. In this position, the gallbladder will be less mobile and the development of a major tractus will be quicker. According to Adams and colleagues, a major tractus could be obtained in as little as one week. Since the normal treatment with percutaneous colostomy averages two weeks, this approach limits the risk of bile leakage upon removal of the drainage tube. The only disadvantage of this approach is the increased risk of bleeding connected to the puncture of the liver. Once again, this risk is limited by appropriate patient selection. Henceforth, we will only discuss drainage by transhepatic approach. Many radiologists use a combined ultrasound and fluoroscopic approach to establish a percutaneous access and advocate the use of guide wires and Seldinger techniques. However, during the course of this lecture, we will demonstrate how the procedure can be safely and confidently performed without the need of a fluoroscopy or guide wires. It's a purely ultrasound guided technique and with a one step catheter insertion. Let's see what equipment is needed to perform an ultrasound guided percutaneous cholecystostomy. The procedure should be strictly sterile. Thus, on the surgical table should be prepared beforehand swabs and disinfectant such as chlorhexidine, sterile drapes, a sterile transducer cover with rubber bands to keep it in place, sterile ultrasound gel, syringes and needles, and a surgical blade for skin incision. The star of the whole procedure is the so-called pigtail catheter. This is a catheter which features a removable rigid internal metallic second lumen and a coiled end. There are several types of pigtail catheter from a number of manufacturers. The most important feature is the locking wire, which locks the coil and prevents catheter dislodgement. As you can see from the movie, and this particular catheter model has skater manufactured by Angiotech, by pulling the wire, the coil is firmly locked. We customarily use a 7 French catheter, but 8 and 9 French are similarly acceptable. Once all your equipment is prepared, it is time to set the stage for the procedure. The patient will be laying supine on the operative table. The upper right abdominal quadrant will be scrubbed with disinfectant. Remember that this is a procedure that can be safely performed at bedside, uh, even in an intensive care environment. The sterile drapes should be placed in such a way to delimit an operative field as small as possible. Some uh, sterile uh, ultrasound gel should be placed on the operative field. The ultrasound probe should be clad with a sterile cover. Considering that the tube is to be inserted with a craniocaudal angle, those who are comfortable holding the transducer in the left hand and inserting the drainage with the right hand should be standing on the patient's left side, and vice versa. At this point, the anesthetic should be injected first in the skin and subcutaneous fat, then in the muscular layer and in the parietal peritoneum. This is best done under ultrasound guidance. We customarily inject 20 milliliters of xylocaine. Once the area is anesthetized, a 2 mm long skin incision should be made at the insertion site. The pigtail catheter is now introduced through the incision and easily advanced through the subcutaneous fat. Insertion through the muscle layer requires a certain amount of force, but this depends on the general condition and on the age of the patient. At this point, it is useful to ask the patient to hold the breath in order to quickly and safely introduce the catheter through the liver and in one single and decided motion inside the gallbladder as shown in this sequence. As you see, this procedure does not require the use of guide wires inserted under fluoroscopic guidance and can be safely performed with a one-step approach. This movie shows how sometimes the gallbladder wall gives an elastic and a persistent resistance to catheterization. 
this resistance must be worn with the right amount of force, taking care of not puncturing the opposite wall. Once the catheter is in place and the metal stiffening cannula is removed, by pulling the wire, the coil is locked as shown in this movie. This ultrasound image shows how the catheter with the locket coil is gently pulled to allow the gallbladder to firmly adhere to the liver surface. This will prevent by leakage through the insertion hole. The bile can be aspirated by a syringe or connected to a collecting bag. Remember to always hold a gentle traction to minimize the mobility of the gallbladder. After some minutes, the bile will be flowing through the catheter in the collecting bag as shown in this picture. Any drainage procedure, though minimally invasive, entails a certain risk of complications. Following percutaneous and transhepatic insertion of a drainage tube in the gallbladder, a bleeding can occur in the abdominal wall or in the liver. A good patient selection, based on the exclusion of patients with a reduced coagulatory function, will minimize this risk. As mentioned before, leakage of bile is a feared and extremely dangerous complication. It can lead to chemical or infectious peritonitis. The transhepatic approach by fixating the gallbladder against the liver surface reduces the risk of bile leakage. Catheter dislodgement may have two possible negative effects. On one hand, the dislodged catheter does not work and the cholecystitis is not decompressed. On the other hand, the prematurely dislodged catheter leaves a hole in the gallbladder wall which may lead to bile leakage. Finally, the development of a fistula, as well as any infectious complication, is always present. Sometimes a leakage from a gallbladder drainage is suspected. The role of the radiologist and of the ultrasound specialist is to reveal or roll out the leakage, map it, and if possible, stop it. A leakage is suspected every time a patient with a gallbladder drainage experiences a pain compatible with a peritoneal irritation. In this particular case, the patient was in a coma, so a physical examination could not be performed. An abdominal CT scan obtained because of suspected intestinal paralysis revealed the presence of a pericolecystic fluid collection, and it could not be exactly determined if the gallbladder drainage tube was correctly placed. The radiologist on call was asked to rule out by leakage and catheter dislodgement. The problem was solved by injecting a diluted ultrasound contrast agent through the drainage tube into the gallbladder. As you can see in these images, the contrast agent fills the gallbladder. Here you can see some filling defects due to the presence of sludge, and no leakage could be shown. Furthermore, with uh, these images, it could be clearly established that the transhepatic catheter was correctly positioned. This uh, examination was performed at bedside very quickly and with very little effort. However, as it often happens, the referring physician asked for confirmation of the findings by fluoroscopy. The fluoroscopic examination shows the correct position uh, of the drainage tube and uh, Upon injection of iodinated contrast agent, by leakage was once again, but probably in a less elegant way, ruled out. This is a different case in which a dislodgement of the cholecystostomy tube was suspected because no bile was flowing through the transhepatic tube. Saline could be injected but not aspirated through the tube. Once again, diluted contrast agent was injected through the tube, and as you can see in the picture, the tube is clearly not anymore transhepatic. It lies in the peritoneal space between the abdominal wall and the liver. By the way, this was a non-locket pigtail catheter. In order to minimize the risk of dislodgement, we always recommend insertion of locked catheters. A question that is often raised is if a rupture of the gallbladder in a non-operable patient should be treated by insertion of a drainage tube in the gallbladder itself or in the pericolecystic fluid collection associated to the rupture. 
In my experience, if uh, the gallbladder is uh, still uh, distended, an attempt should be made to decompress it uh, transhepatically. In uh, this particular patient, an abdominal MR scan revealed the wall thickening of the gallbladder compatible with uh, cholecystitis, indicated by the blue arrow, and a uh, small peri pericolecystic collection of fluid indicated by the red arrow. It was uncertain whether the collection of fluid represented a bile leaked from a ruptured gallbladder or a simply inflammatory fluid. The surgeon requested the ultrasound-guided drainage of the gallbladder and asked the ultrasound specialist to determine whether there was a rupture or not. After the ultrasound-guided insertion of a drainage tube in the gallbladder, the diluted ultrasound contrast agent was injected through the tube, which revealed the correct positioning of the tube and the presence of a leakage from a ruptured free wall of the gallbladder, as indicated by the red arrow. The finding was comparable to the one previously seen by MR, only this time ultrasound was more specific than MR in determining the cause of this fluid collection. In summary, Transhepatic ultrasound-guided drainage of the gallbladder is a minimal invasive technique which can obtain a quick, safe and effective decompression of the gallbladder. Whether this procedure is intended as a bridge to surgery or as a definitive treatment. The positioning of a locket coil pigtail catheter by transhepatic approach minimizes the risk of bile leakage, a further complication of cholecystostomy. Well, uh, this uh, concludes our lecture on ultrasound-guided drainage of the gallbladder. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you a nice day.